just, just, okay. And we're back. Hi everyone, Nick here. So today I have my frequently asked questions. I'm gonna respond to those. I have the top 10. I'm gonna try to get through these in five minutes. So let's get right into this. I don't know how this is gonna go because I like to talk. How do you drink more water? Drink more water, three tips. Try infusing your water with fruit or herbs. I personally really like to use mint and um, lemon. If you're using herbs and fruits, you wanna make sure you're using organic because you become what you feed yourself and you don't wanna be eating herbicides. Herbicides, pesticides, chemicals, you don't wanna be putting chemicals in your body um, because they do affect how your body functions, how your new cells are produced. And this is the perfect segue to question number two. Why is organic so expensive? It's expensive because it's hard to grow. No, I mean, it's it's not that it's easy to grow. I have a new appreciation for growing organically. I have a garden in my backyard that I have been tending to since um, April. And now we're going into fall and planting fall crops. And I have learned, I feel like everyone should go through a season of growing food. It gives you an understanding of the hard work and effort and the, the resources that go into growing and harvesting food from the water to the fertilization to the the care and the love and the time it takes to make sure that you're you're trimming and um, pruning and harvesting and trying to combat bugs that is that has been the vein of my existence but it's also introduced me to some really cool looking bugs so I'm trying to find trying to find the positive in it so I said all that to say this to answer the question Organic costs more because it takes more time and effort to grow the produce. And um, typically when you buy produce that is not organically grown, it's not the freshest either. So there's less time and commitment and care that goes into um, like tomatoes for instance. Most tomatoes that you buy in the store have they're not picked when they're they're not vine ripened. They're not, they're just not. So that's a really good way to kind of understand why organic costs more than non-organic. Um, but it, it's just the fact that it takes more time and effort to grow food in the way that it's meant to be grown. And the food that's non-organic that's cheaper is cheaper because it, it's just the, the love and the care is not there and you're not paying for those added nutrients or phytonutrients that are in produce that is organic because it has been allowed to mature. Honestly, I, food is not supposed to be cheap and a lot of people are eating food that's not real food if you're eating a lot of processed food packaged food you should really watch my last video where i talk about that um, about why people struggle and you know you may need to look at what you're eating um but it's fake food so you're not paying for anything that's real too so just some things to kind of think about. I feel like I went on for a really long time, but that is like the number, honestly, that is probably the most asked question every single month. I get asked all the time, uh, especially by clients when we talk about the dirty dozen and you know, organic versus non-organic. Like, why is it so expensive? My favorite spices. My favorite two spices right now that I have been using the heck out of are smoked paprika and I have this truffled Himalayan black, no, gray salt. So good. Those are my fave spices right now. What causes wrinkles? Aging. <laughs> I 
yeah, right. No, um, but honestly, it does. We, your skin ages, it causes wrinkles, and the aging process can be exasperated or slowed down <clears throat> based on internal and external factors, internal through diet or poor diet, not eating real food, eating really excessive carbohydrates and sugars, uh, you know, because when you eat carbs in excess, they are processed as sugar in many ways um and it causes your collagen and elastin production it it affects the productivity of your cells and um so that's the internal effects external effects hanging out in the sun just sun baking um it's it's cooking your skin from the outside in it causes skin damage uh a suntan is a burn you're burning your skin and then honestly you're just we all get older every day we're getting older gravity sets in and our body our bodies get older so over time our collagen and elastin production is not the same compared to when we were when we were younger so you know i think wrinkles are part of life and it's just all about taking care of your skin in a healthy way to to not age the skin in a in a faster a faster way that a lot of people are doing. They're aging their skin from just unnecessarily. Are all essential oils safe? No. All essential oils are not safe. You really want to make sure that you are aware of how they grow their essential oils, where it's being sourced from. You want to make sure it's a reputable um, resource, manufacturer. Uh, essential oils are powerful. They are the reason why they're so expensive, especially the ones that take a lot to produce to, to obtain the oil is that it is a very concentrated form of the plant. Um, so that's why essential oils are expensive. I know no one really asked that question, but hey, bonus. Um, so no, all essential oils are not safe because they're not all produced in the same way. And also too, some of them are so powerful that they can, they're not as safe applied topically they have to be applied in certain ways so you want to be careful how you are working with essential oils they're very powerful they're they're, they're very medicinal um, in many forms in many ways so you want to be sure that you are taking that into consideration because it can cause some significant um, damage to to your body and in some ways how do i know my skin type okay skin typing so to know your skin typing typically it, it has a lot to do with the size of your pores and the location of your pores um if your skin is is oily towards the end of the day do you have dryness and tightness uh, throughout the day so if you have dryness and tightness typically that's drier skin types if you're oily through the end of the day it tends to be you have an oily skin type it means your pores are larger through this area here called the t-zone area um normal skin or those who don't have any dryness or excessive oiliness they're considered to be balanced um, and then most people I find that do have oily skin have some type of combination skin just because of where the sebaceous glands are as are active on the skin that produce the sebum that is what is on the skin giving it that oily appearance so and it's usually like oily through the t-zone here uh, pores are larger because the sebaceous glands are active and because they're active they're filling the sub your um, pores with oil so because they're filled they're more enlarged compared to those who have drier skin whose skin is not as um, the sebaceous glands are not active if compared to those with oilier skin types so the, the pores are tighter because they're not filled with oil or sebum. So that's, in a nutshell, how to tell your skin type.
The question is, how did I learn to cook? Oh, I learned to cook. My mom growing up always cooked. We didn't eat out a lot. She was a single mom and you know, money was really tight. So she cooked a lot and we didn't eat out because we couldn't afford it. But honestly, I am so happy my mom did cook because we ate real food and food was really good. So I learned to cook for my mom and my uncle and um, just, I like to eat. So it helps to know how to cook so I can cook food that I, I like to eat. So um, that's how I learned to cook. I learned to cook by just doing it, trial and error, being okay with the fact that I burned something this time and learning how to not burn something the next time, make it taste better and adjust. Is skipping breakfast bad? Um, this is a very much a individual thing. For some people, they're fine with not eating breakfast. For some people, they need to eat breakfast. Breakfast, and then it depends on if you have any any type of um, issues going on as well. Uh, it's, it's not an easy. It's not a hard yes and a hard no. It's it's simply do what feels right for your body. So I do intermittent fasting, and so I don't have breakfast at all. I don't eat until if I get up about eight, I don't typically eat my first meal until like 12 or one, um, and sometimes a little bit longer. So breakfast is not necessarily, is, is not important for me and it works for me. Um, whereas some people intermittent fasting is just, they just, it's just not for them and they really have to they don't feel right unless they eat something within the first couple of hours um, that they're up so it just that's a question that there's no it's not a yes or no it's it's very much an individualistic approach to what you find works for you what is a health coach so i have been getting this question a lot a health coach is someone who helps guide you through your wellness, your well-being uh, goals. Um, it's just someone who, it's a one-on-one it's a one -on -one session where they sit down or on the phone in person and work with you to figure out what it is that you want from your life and coming up with a plan, of an actionable plan based on um, your, your current lifestyle and um, your goals or what have you and just working the plan and them holding you accountable and holding a space a really safe sacred space to share things that have happened and um, they provide you with resources to help support you in your goals so um, that in a nutshell is what a health coach is and the last question is why do I meditate and how do I meditate? I meditate because it really, really, truly allows me the space to hear the answers that I seek in terms of walking down my, my current path of um, living my life. Um, and it helps to guide me down that journey. Um, I meditate just to clear my mind. I meditate to relieve stress. I meditate to um, to just have a moment to just exist and, and honor my heart space, to be quiet enough to hear my my inner voice my heart my deepest desires revealed to me and through meditation it really does allow you to hear that so how do you meditate that's very it's very individualistic uh, you have to find what works for you meditation is just simply going through a process of breathing in breathing in the good and breathing out the bad. It's about a mind shift. It's about 
asking questions, your heart's desires, and, and quieting yourself to the point to where you can hear them. So, um, you know, there's, there's different ways to meditate and everyone does it differently, but that's how I do it. 10 questions answered for you right there. So those are my frequently asked questions that I was asked last month. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, and I will see you guys really soon. So before you go, thumbs up if you want me to continue to do these FAQ. I don't even know if you guys really like these. I need to know, so um, I need a thumbs up. Or comment down below and let me know that you like these. And um, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss notifications of when new content comes out. So there's new videos every Wednesday released at lunchtime to feed you in some way, in a positive way to help, help move you towards your wellness and well-being goals and your overall skin health, loving the skin that you love better. So thanks for watching and I will see you guys soon. Bye.